Fun fact, that is the first and basically last fight I ever showed my girlfriend. What up, Fightful fam? Welcome to your Fightful Fix September 10, 2020 edition. We're going to take a look at Nick Diaz's impending return to MMA, so it seems, as well as the holdup in the potential Dustin Poy tony Ferguson fight at UFC 254. Now, before we get started, if you don't mind hitting subscribe and tapping the notification bell, that goes such a long way to helping our channel grow, and a like on this video never hurts either. Okay, first up, Nick Diaz is in shape and he's locked and loaded for a UFC return. He posted an Instagram photo showing off his fitness regimen. Ariel Helwani says that he is working on a return and UFC president Dana White is holding his breath. As far as Dana is concerned, it's more of a, I'll believe it when I see it situation with Nick Diaz. Nick hasn't fought in quite a while and you already have basically everyone in the UFC clamoring to fight him. Steven Thompson, Darren Till, Leon Edwards, you name it, they have probably called out Nick Diaz. But what would really make sense for his return? It's kind of a tricky territory with Nick Diaz. We don't really quite know where he's at. I believe he's rather long in the tooth. Uh, title run seems completely out of the picture and you don't want to match him up against someone who doesn't have a whole lot of name value or someone who won't be elevated supremely high by beating him. Additionally, I don't even think Nick Diaz is interested in taking a fight against any up-and-comers, prospects, or you know, top 10 guys looking to make a name at his expense. Now, the Jorge Masvidal fight has been mentioned before. Now you got Nate versus Jorge too, especially if Masvidal beats Nate Diaz twice. That gives Nick room to call for a match to avenge his little brother. I don't think that's going to go very well for Nick. What I think would make the most sense for Nick Diaz in his return is a fight against top 10 ranked middleweight Chris Weidman. Chris is coming off of that win over Omari Ahmedov that almost made more questions than it answered. At this point, I think most people would agree that Chris Weidman doesn't look like he's ready to make another run at the top of the division, and he's kind of in a tough place in terms of where you match him up. I think the highest ranked person you could put Chris up against is Derek Brunson, but I would heavily, heavily favor Brunson in that fight, and then you'd have to look behind Chris at up-and-coming contenders like Ian Heinish, Marvin Vittori, and uh, there's at least one more. Oh, uh, Edmund Shabazian. Now, assuming Chris Weidman isn't interested in taking another fight back, I think Nick Diaz is a super high profile fight and it's one where I think you would have to favor Chris Weidman just based off of his activity. However, both guys have seen better days. They're on the tail ends of their careers and it would prove for an interesting stylistic matchup. I kind of see it in the realm of Nate Diaz versus Anthony Pettis. Both guys very game. Uh, both guys can be world beaters on the right night, but have struggled with inconsistency. You'll recall they have a shared opponent in Anderson Silva. I'm sure there are more, but I honestly, I'm just kind of putting this together willy-nilly. Chris Weidman beat Anderson Silva twice, both under, you know, unique circumstances. The first being that knockout punch where Anderson Silva was kind of clowning around, and the second being that horrible, horrible leg snap that Silva experienced off a checked kick from Weidman. Fun fact, that is the first and basically last fight I ever showed my girlfriend. So who knows if Nick Diaz is really going to stick to this comeback, but I think Wonderboy Thompson would be too tough a fight. Darren Till would be too tough a fight. Jorge Masvidal would be too tough a fight. I say give him Chris Weidman. There's probably enough there to uh, wet the beaks of both men. For sure, Chris Weidman would be down. I, I feel like Nick Diaz might want to shoot even higher in terms of name value, but I think that is the right first fight. It gives both men a good launching pad to move up from there. Chris Weidman, Nick Diaz, make it happen. And then as we wrap up here, Dustin Poy versus Tony Ferguson uh, was said to be in the works by UFC President Dana White. Shout out to Oscar Willis of the Mac Life who broke that story. But it has yet to be officially announced, man. UFC 254 is stacking up in a huge, huge way. You've got Habib Nurmagomedov versus Justin Gaethje on that card. You've got Zabit Megamet Sharipov versus Yair Rodriguez on that card. 
Again, I think I really didn't do any fact checking today. My bad. But Dustin Poirier versus Tony Ferguson has yet to be confirmed. Uh, from what I understand, Tony Ferguson has agreed to the terms. It's Dustin Poirier who is holding off. Parties behind the scenes believe that everything will resolve itself eventually, especially considering the fight is, you know, a month and a half away. But Dustin said that you know, he's a prize fighter and the prize needs to be sufficient. He needs to be compensated fairly to take a Tony Ferguson fight. This kind of struck me as a little odd. Like, I don't recall Dustin Poirier ever having a whole lot of issues with the UFC at the negotiations table. Both parties have always seemed to be on the same page. Uh, Dustin Poirier has always been a willing fighter. And listen, Dustin deserves to get paid. He's a former interim champion. He's beaten a who's who. He's fought a who's who in the UFC. Truly, truly an all-time great fighter. But um, yeah, this just kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Like I said, these two parties generally seem to be pretty compatible when they work together. I really want to see the fight for two reasons. One, Dustin Poirier versus Tony Ferguson is going to be tremendous, bonkers. I worry for both men's health, but strictly from a fan point of view, that's going to be an epic fight and I can't wait to see it. Additionally, being on the same card as Habib versus Justin Gaethje opens up a whole world of possibilities. If for some reason Justin Gaethje falls out, you could make the Tony Ferguson Habib fight. I know Dustin is coming off of a win and Tony is coming off of a loss, but Habib has fought Dustin Poirier very recently, beat him decisively, and that Tony Habib fight was cursed and may never happen. But man, wouldn't it be a fitting story if after the half a dozen attempts to book that fight, we finally get it as like a short notice replacement booking. And it also opens the opportunity for a Poye Gaethje rematch should Habib fall out. Dustin Poirier has a win over Justin Gaethje. It was super competitive, but we've seen Gaethje make some truly career-defining changes in that time, and I would love to see how a rematch would turn out. And that is all for today's Fightful Fix. Let me know in the comments section, what would you be more interested in seeing? Habib versus Tony, or a rematch between Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje? If you enjoyed this video, the best way you can help our channel grow is by hitting subscribe and tapping the notification bell, and a like on this video could go a long way as well. For Fightful MMA, I'm Shaquille. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe and we'll catch you next time.